you elevate her. Mm -hmm. But you also have it in position whereby the man is there can do something. Right. But when you elevate with not giving anything to the man, then a woman naturally comes out and says, ultimately, I don't need a man. I mean, I'm daddy and mom, you see? And that breaks down the whole structure of the, of the community. We're the only community like that consistently where the the man and the woman is every, every uh, it's just broken. It's broken. Completely. That we the people, we need God. That's, that's, that's who's going to be able to open up the eyes of the women, open up the eyes of the men, and let them see that, look, we are in this together. Without you, I can't prosper. Without me, you can't prosper. And, and for us to prosper together as a whole, as a family, as a community, we have to get in line with our rules. Hello, friend, and welcome to The Conservative Poet. My name is Amanya. Here in this segment of the show, what you're going to get is a piece of the conversation that happened between me and Dr. Issa White. So enjoy it. We talk a little bit about cackling Kamala. We talk a little bit about the warmongers, Liz Cheney and her father endorsing Kamala Harris, and a little bit more. So let's get into it right now. See that Trump could get back in um, and they're afraid and they have no, I mean, look who they've put up, Kamala Harris. Yeah. She's oh. a cackling fool. This is who they've put up. Yeah. And and they think the American people are dumb. Yes. You know, uh, you have Harris, then you have uh, Dick Cheney now came out to support uh, yeah, uh, his his daughter. What's her name? Yeah. Liz, I'm saying, Liz, yeah. Do they think Americans are dumb? Don't we remember what he lied about with the Iraq situa situation? Well, that whole element. Let's look at Liz Cheney for a second here. She comes out here to endorse Kamala Harris, right? Yes. And it kind of makes you 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 think about this this way. Liz Cheney, who is a warmonger if I may say so. She likes wars. Yes. yes. And so here you are, a Republic, so-called Republican, never Trump, Trump or rhino, who comes out here and say, you support Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, who right now is for war. And this is how they keep their pockets filled. This is how they keep mm. the money rolling. Everybody gets fed. Everybody gets fed off these wars. And we have our babies dying. Young blacks are dying. Males are dying. People are dying left, right, and center. And this is who Liz Cheney says, you know, I want to be on that side. Yeah. What they, kind of Republican are you? Yeah. She, she's a warmonger. Yeah. And they're trying to make it out. If you disagree, you say you don't like black women. Well, you know, that's not true. I... I would love to see Condoleezza Rice. Oh, you know, you're talking about, that's my girl right, right. there. I love and, me and Condi Rice. there are Rice. a number of quality women yes. on both sides who, who are be. analytical, who are smart, that can reason. Yeah. Well, but, Kamala Harris is none of these women. She is a puppet who yeah. can be handled however which way they want her to. You know, she is... I mean, we, we say it like jokingly, but it's really not jokingly. Kamala Harris is literally a chameleon. She will turn herself inside and out to present herself to whatever it is that she needs to be for the moment. If she needs to be, you know, turning into different languages, talking crazy, yeah. different tones, different, you know, ways, then she's going to do that. No yeah. matter where she ends up, she can mold herself to be whatever it is the puppet master say, I need you to be. Yeah. And, and they, they try to push this idea that since she went to Howard University, mm. she's African-American. Well, no, she's you know, a red dot. Yeah. Well, here, here. Remember what Malcolm stated. I have to go back to Malcolm. Keep going. We Malcolm love Malcolm. Malcolm stated that if you put, if a kitten, if a cat had kittens in the oven, would the kittens be called biscuits? No. No, no they'd be called <laughs> right, fried so, 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 so therefore, <laughs> if she went to Howard, doesn't mean that she's African American or no. in the culture. She's and it's okay. It's okay. So, 
And they, they asked Malcolm that because people kept on saying, well, you're an American. He said, no, I'm, I'm a victim of America. Like now, many people are victims of the Democratic establishment. Yes. All right. Yes. And just about all of us are victims of this Democratic establishment. Um, when we look at what's happening to our pocketbooks, when we look at what's happening to the border, let's talk about oh, the border oh, for, for just, oh, geez, you don't oh. want to talk about well, the border. I, I, I got to talk about the border. You okay. know, they, again, they make it sound as if, if you're calling for strong border control, yeah. you're anti immigrant. And that's not My the case. My father is Costa Rican. Mm. All right. I'm mm. the real Afro Latino here. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. Look at you. And my father came illegally. They deported him. The mother was concerned. He got his papers right in a few months and came back. Proud Republican at that. Oh, I'm sure. All right. He was he was he was put on the Civil Rights Commission under Gerald Ford. I don't know if you remember him. Mm. All right. And uh, he was the president after Nixon. He was vice. He was Nixon's vice president. So the point is, is that many over ninety percent of immigrants in the United States who are legal, they want high restrictions. Yes. All right, because they are being hampered by this. Mm -hmm. Every country has this. I lived in Brazil, mm. and living in Brazil, because I wasn't a citizen, mm -hmm. for me to have a bank account. I had to show at least $30,000. And this was when I first moved there 25 years ago. Wow. So that would have been much more today. Mm -hmm. All right? Because they said that you're not here. You're not a Brazilian. So therefore, if you come illegal, it doesn't give you the rights as an American citizen. Yeah. All right? We yeah. have to understand that. Then we have another problem mm -hmm. along with this. Many of the... The money they're giving to these Ill illegals. Yes. All right. Yeah. They should be given to real people who are having a tough time. We have unemployment. We have mass uh, homelessness. Yeah. We have people who are sick on the streets. Yeah. If, if you've been to San Francisco, it looks like a, a zombie village. Man. If you go to Los Angeles, you see the same thing. Yeah. I was in Chicago the other day in the Loop area. You have this taking place and, and illegals taking over the South Side. Yeah. If you, I was in Detroit. You see these things taking place. Yes. And the American people are asking, what about us? What about us? All right. They keep what asking. about else? It's, it's almost like now you have to go to Mexico, come in illegally. <laughs> Just to get, to get something, something right? See? That's and, what you and, have to do. And, 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 and this is wrong. It's very wrong. All right. And, and by doing this, they don't see that there is a decaying. Mm -hmm. of the American spirit. Yeah. There's a decaying of the American psyche that's going to be river, that's, that's going to turn into a conflict at some stage in our community, yeah. in our country. I mean, you know, just yesterday I was um, driving somewhere and I'm at the light and um, I see a group of men working on the street. I'm always curious. I'm always looking to, to see who's on, the, who's working. There's about seven or eight um, of them out there. And would you believe not one of those was a brother? They all not one was a white man, not one was a black man. And I couldn't help but wonder where these are the kinds of jobs you used to see black men doing. You know, these utility workers, these roofers, these you know, hands-on work. You know, you don't see they, they don't you don't see that anymore. And it yeah. just makes me wonder. What is it that, that, that the black man is doing? Because they have literally been replaced on these, these kinds of jobs. Like, where are they? What are they doing? How are they making a living? Like, how are you getting your money if you're no longer on these jobs? Well, they have one place for the African-American male to go besides prison, and that's the military. Do you realize that over 51 percent of the American military are made up of African-American men? All right. I didn't that's the only that. place they're going. And that's because we're in a war zone. When I mean war zone, I mean mentally. We're constantly thinking about American hegemony and controlling other places. For example, when the American troops were killed the other day in Iraq, they didn't tell you 
that three quarters of them were African American men. They haven't released that yet. No. All right. When they when 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 they tell you that our troops are being attacked in Syria, the majority of those four thousand men in that uh, on that base are African American. God. You see, they're building a base now on the disputed lands between Guyana and Venezuela. Most of that, most of the builders and most of the troops are African American men. What am I saying? They put in our young men as cannon fire in harm's way. Not just them, but poor whites. All right? These poor whites that's from Bithlow. These poor whites who are from Appalachia. Mm -hmm. These poor whites who are from Colorado. Mm -hmm. All right? And poor Latinos. That's where they're putting them. That's the only thing they have open for the African American, the poor white, and the poor Latino community. Wow. And no one is being said. It's not an accident, going back to Frost, that he voted to voted. enhance the draft about three or four months ago. They wow. said it's not a draft. It is a draft. It is a draft. Because you're getting you ready for a conflict. And, and they're going to be drafting African American men. All wow. right? This is for real. And that is why Martin Luther King stated, the greatest purveyor of violence on the face of the planet is the United States of America. Okay. And this is one thing that Trump, he's going to stop. He says, day one, we will stop the war. Yes. Under his, under his uh, tenure, there wasn't any major conflict like no, this. No, there was not. None. There was not. But I tell you something. Yes. These people right now in Washington, and even some of the members of the GOP as well, they are like bloody wolves Yes, with, with blood dripping from their teeth. Yeah. They love war. They, they love do. death. In fact, Lindsey Graham said it the other day. He said one of the greatest things that we have done is to have the war in Ukraine because they're getting paid. God. Seen that? Heard that? Good. Friend, temperatures are up. In this political climate, if you are stressed out with the idea or thought that cackling Kamala could become president, then I understand your stress because, friend, I have it too. So, and for my stress, I burn candles, patriotic candles that can help you as well with the easing of this stress. And also, friend, pick one up at theorlandopatriot.com, get 30% off, pick one for friends and family as well, because under this, we all are stressed out. So 30% off theorlandopatriot.com. Thank you. Friend, temperatures are up in this political climate. If you are stressed out, And if you enjoyed that segment, then watch the full episode right here.